it's Ben Wallace and Zor Fitness, and this is the name game. There's literally crickets while I'm silent. Um, anyway, today's workout is number 11, and it is Wayne Gretzky. It has nothing to do with Wayne Gretzky. Um, it is for time with a 15 minute time cap, which includes the rest period, if you get to the rest period, um, of one to eight of overhead squats at 135.95 and squat cleans at 135.95. So it's one, one, two, two, three, three, up to eight, eight. If you get that far and you're still in that 15 minutes, you're gonna rest three minutes and then you're going to go eight to one of chest to bar pull up and toes to bar. So again, eight, eight, seven, seven, six, six, all the way down to one and one. So before we get into this workout, because it's got some moving parts to it, um, let's talk about the standards. So for the overhead squat, um, you can lock out, you don't have to lock out and then descend your squat because you can, again, you can snatch in the bottom of your, um, into the, the bottom of the squat and then stand up. You could snatch balance. Um, as long as you're locked out in the bottom of the squat and you stand up fully and you're locked out and, and you show control at the top of the rep, that's good. Um, obviously, the, the hip crease has to go below the top of the knee, um, but that also applies to the squat clean. Squat clean starts from the ground, um, and then it's just got to you got make sure make sure you come to a full stand before you drop your elbows behind the plane of the bar or drop the bar off your shoulders. Um, so make sure you're locking out hip, knee, and ankle on the line before you actually drop that bar. Um, chest bar, very simple, hang, and then to chest touch, and your chest is anywhere between your collarbones and your uh, bottom of your breast bone. So anywhere in this range is would be counted as a rep. Um, that's what's considered your chest. So, and then lastly, so the bar, feet have to go behind the plane of the bar, both feet, and then both feet have to come up and touch the bar at the top. Um, again, if you're doing singles, you can't touch the floor in between, like you have to have your feet come back behind the bar and then go up without ever having um, made contact with the floor. Okay, that being said, let's get into sort of the flow of the workout or how you're gonna think about um, this and um, yeah, just my overall thoughts on it. So first of all, the equipment setup is basically irrelevant here because you're on the same bar the whole time and um, you're gonna be on the same pull up bar the whole time and there's a rest period between. So transitions are irrelevant between elements. Um, that being said, transitions are actually extremely important in this workout because you're transitioning from one barbell movement to another barbell movement and the one barbell movement involves a buy-in. So in other words, you can't, you have to be able to snatch or clean jerk and get the bar overhead to be able to overhead squat. That's not the case for the squat clean, like you start from the ground. So you're pretty incentivized to drop the bar on the squat cleans, whereas you're not incentivized to drop the bar on the overhead squat because every single time that you drop the bar there, you have to either do another snatch, another clean jerk, or another clean jerk to back rack, to hands wide, to snatch balance, or whatever variation of that you're doing. So that being said, say you're on your round of six squat cleans and you do five squat cleans and you drop that bar, you very easily can do your last squat clean, do that final squat clean, and then directly go into your overhead squats. But that being said, or you're going to either finish your squat clean in your normal grip, stand up, and you know jerk overhead and try to move your hands out there, which is probably not going to work very well. You could you know possibly clean up and then try to move your hands out wide and like be in like a really wide. Uh, jerk position and then jerk overhead and go from there. You could like do like a squat jerk into your like a snatch grip overhead squat or sorry a clean grip overhead squat. You could do um, you know your last squat clean, put it on the back rack, move your hands out to your normal uh, grip width and then go down. Um, so I always have my athletes try to develop a clean grip overhead squat or jerk grip overhead squat. So this is something where, one of the reasons why this translates really well is because in workouts like this, we're going from a clean movement into an overhead squat movement, which is traditionally thought as like a snatch accessory. Um, there's, it's really advantageous to be able to have a variety of positions and be able to have other skills to transition from one to the other. 
That being said, if you're someone who just is not on board in terms of capacity for this workout and your positions just aren't good um, and 135 is extremely heavy for you on an overhead squat, then it just really doesn't matter that much because you're probably going to have to break it anyway and it's something where um, you just have to manage the work. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's again, the first part is one to eight. So one, one, two, two, up to eight. So it's building this way. And then the other half, it's like a pyramid where it's going to narrow back down. So it starts eight, eight, seven, seven, and then ends at one, one. So if you were someone who gets through that entire piece in, that means you're a pretty high level athlete because you're making through that entire um, two rounds or two sections of the workout, including the three minute rest all within that 15 minutes. Then when you get to last like, three, three, two, two, one, one. It's the same thing with transitions where are you gonna come off the bar to do your, you know, between a chest bar and a toes bar, or are you going to revert to a gymnastics kip so that you can keep the pattern the same so you can do, um, you know, three chest to bar and then directly to three toes to bar, directly back into two chest bar, directly back into two to one to one. Obviously that takes a lot more spatial awareness and control on the bar to be able to do that and a ton of capacity to be able to do that late in the workout. But if you're someone who's that talented and that uh, fit, then you might have that issue. So something to think about if you get there. Um, so lastly is some thoughts about the workout. I already talked about transitions um, between elements with you know on the same apparatus. Um, however, we also have to think about even as you're transitioning from part one to part two, three minutes is not a super long time. So how much do you like sell out in that first part? Um, plus, like if you are at the 12 minute mark and you finish that workout, you're at 12 or four and you finish the workout, you're done. Like the three minutes takes you over top of the 15 minute time cap and you don't get to do any. So for some people, they're racing to finish under the 12 minute mark where they can maybe get a chat, uh, a, at least a set of um, gymnastics before that time's up. So other than that, this is a pretty grippy workout once again. Um, even the overhead squat is sneaky because uh, people don't think about it. It's like a, a pressing overhead movement, but really you have to, especially if you're holding fairly wide, you have to have quite a bit of grip input just so your hands don't slide on the bar. Um, and just be able to keep a relatively stable closed position is really actually important to be able to actually grip. So that being said, every single one of these is gonna attach your grip, especially if you ever decide, I don't think most people are, but if you decide to be touching your squat cleans, that's really gonna blow up your grip. Um, yeah, and besides that, I mean, there's really nowhere to hide in terms of transitions on this workout. Um, like there's, it's not like you're walking around or transitioning between different elements. Like you're, you could literally just, you know, stick on that bar the entire time. Um, so you have to find ways where you're gonna break, how you're gonna break, be strategic about it um, and be smart. So have a break strategy and things are gonna get real, real quick. Um, so full session build out with warm ups and cool downs and all the stuff that you need. Um, for people who are just watching on YouTube is in the comments below. For everybody else, it's either in your um, individual design uh, spreadsheet or on the site. Um, so for those of you who are not signed up for the protocol, um, feel free to head over to zorfitness.com slash the protocol. That's the protocol all in word to get a seven day free trial. So um, yeah, best of luck to everyone on Wayne Gretzky.